Hello and welcome to the Venice vlog. Um, so I'm very excited to share this video with you. So I did something a little different when I was editing this video. Um, I actually tried editing it like at the same time as I was editing the last video. So hopefully, I don't know, maybe that did something for the flow of the video. You let me know. Let me know if you liked it or if you hated it. I uh, just want to mention again, I am trying to hit a thousand subscribers. So if you could please hit the subscribe button if you enjoy this video and give me a little like, pregame with a like, that'd be super awesome of you. This was supposed to be the last stop on our trip, um, but there will be a little surprise at the end, which will result in a bonus video. So look forward to that. See you at the end. Welcome to Venice. In the previous episode, I talked about my time in Verona. When we left Verona, we traveled by train. It's actually a pretty short train ride. It's only about, I think, two hours. So that was quite nice. Got to sit on the train and just see the Italian countryside. We got to Venice. We stopped by our hotel, which is right about here. We stayed at the Casa San Rocco. That was actually a really nice hotel room that we stayed in was really nice. It was actually the biggest room out of all the hotels that we had stayed at. It was like a full living kitchenette bedroom area. So like you could actually have like a whole family stay there, I think. And then we went to go find some food. During our time in Italy, I was looking for some good pizza and we came across this place. Um, I don't know if this is what it was called, but this is the beer from the place. But we came across a place that I guess had like deep dish pizza, which I was under the impression that most pizza in Italy is not deep dish. I'm not sure if that's like super authentic to the area or if it's just like a touristy thing. I don't know. We ate had a beer. We stopped by the Rialto Bridge. I will say that inside here there are tons of like vendors I guess selling all sorts of knickknacky things and whatnot. It's super crowded. It's not exactly in my opinion like super pleasant to be staying there for a long time. I mean of course like you want to see when it's your first time in a city you want to see all the major landmarks but to me it's like one of those things like after you've seen it once you don't really need to see it again. I think this was actually just a stock image that I pulled from the internet because I didn't have any good images of the Rialto Bridge from the front but this was a picture that I took while I was on my trip. Um, and this is from the Rialto Bridge looking south. I kind of like how this spread came out actually. I like how just like the colors came all together. I like the line work. I think it looks really good. I need to figure out a different situation for um, whiteout because I just kind of have like one of those tape whiteout thingies. Whenever I use it, whenever I, I try to like color over it or do any sort of line work over it, it just ends up looking all discolored and I don't love that. So I want to get like some liquid white out, um, but I don't know, I just haven't done it yet. Uh, the whole spread was done with this same Pentel Sleechy 0.25 gel ballpoint pen. It was mostly colored in with Prismacolor pencils and then the background just on the water um, was done in a Posca marker. So we went to the plaza, like the main city square in Venice, and just kind of took a look at the major landmarks like the Doge's Palace and the Basilica San Marco, I think, and you know, saw all that kind of stuff. And so these are some images from that. So this is like a building, um, like when you're looking at the Basilica and you turn to the left, there's like a pathway and this is the building and the facade. But it had like this interesting like kind of celestial clock. I, I don't know, maybe I should do some line work with my fine liner pens because I kind of lost the line work when I did when I colored it in with the Prismacolor, but it had this interesting like celestial clock situation going on. 
and then I liked the gold detailing on the buildings. I thought that was really cool. When I start, start to draw them, I just realized how much detail is in the buildings. Like even on a simple building in Italy, there's like so many different just like details to the facade. Um, and I really appreciate that about a lot of European architecture is very detailed. So this in the background is the facade for the Basilica San Marco. And um, I will say this spread took like a super long time, mostly because of the facade. Like I think altogether, because if you don't already know, I draw in the mornings for only like 20 minutes usually. And um, whatever I can get done in that 20 minutes is what I get done. Um, but this facade is super detailed and it took a super long time to do the whole thing. So it took, um, that, that made this spread take a super long time. I think it took maybe a solid four weeks to do just the facade of the basilica. Yeah, so we saw all the basilica. We didn't go inside, we just took some pictures as we were passing by. So these were my own reference images. And then um, after that we stopped in, um, we found like some sort of diner and uh Juan saw that they had like some beer advertised and he was just like oh let's try it out and so we went in and he was like oh can I have a beer he's like a, a like a big size one and so the guy was like oh you want like a liter and he was like yeah yeah yeah." I don't know if he was really paying attention and I asked for a beer too he's like you too and I was like yeah so he gave us both a liter of beer we were like, oh my god, I was not expecting this. It's like literally the size of our heads. And, uh, you know, we we're like, okay, well, we're already committed to this. We got, we got it. So I guess we're doing this. Thankfully, it was a pretty light beer. It wasn't a, like, it, I don't think the alcohol content was super high. So that made it a little bit easier. We were at least able to finish them. But like the ladies across the aisle from us at the other table they look over and they laugh they're like holy cow like yeah that's a big one and then um i think after that i had actually got tickets to this opera thing um so i had booked it through our credit card provider i looked up just like events that they had tickets available for that i could use points and this ended up being one of them. So they alternate between like an orchestra performance of Vivaldi's Four Seasons. And then um, the other nights they do like a opera performance. My husband has always said that he's wanted to go to the opera. So I was like, well, let's do it. Let's, let's go to the opera. It wasn't like a legit opera. It was kind of like a touristy opera, if I'm being honest. But it was still fun. Like, this guy had a point in the show where he just, like, held a note for so long, everyone just started applauding because they were, like, so impressed. how long he held the note and then like he kind of had this funny um moment in the show where he like made his voice go really high and then made his voice go really low and you know it's just like one of those humorous kind of things so they were really good performers the next day we uh ate breakfast on the terrace of our hotel which i found out later was not actually included with the type of hotel room that we got which I felt was not clearly stated in the uh, ad for the hotel. Um, I don't think I ever ended up paying for the breakfast, but I felt like I already paid enough for the hotel room to earn a breakfast. <laughs> so they never really asked for a payment. They were just like, oh, by the way, that wasn't included. And I was like, oops, sorry. But this was the view of the terrace. It was a really just nice view. It was kind of like, um, you know, over... A courtyard and you could see all the other buildings it was like so um i don't know it was nice i kind of want to have something like this on our deck i feel like i want to do a, a canopy kind of situation like this so after breakfast we we didn't really have many like any plans until the evening 
Um, and so the rest of the day was kind of free. So Juan apparently had been itching to go to the ocean. And when he found out we were near a, an ocean, then he just had to get in it. I was like, you sure there isn't anything else that you want to do? Because like, we live in Southern California. We have lived in San Diego our whole lives. Like, we could just go to the ocean back home. And he was like, no, I need to go to the ocean now. So um, yeah, we went to this place called Lido, which I, if you've ever been on a cruise, you've probably heard of the Lido deck. I didn't realize until I went to Venice and went to Lido in Venice um, that Lido actually means shore. And I was worried about Juan because he was giving me some hand signals, but he's all right. He was all the way at that buoy way over there. And then he was giving me hand signals. So I was worried he was uh, not good, but he gave me the thumbs up, so. Trying to do some sort of Baywatch thing. So yeah, that's Juan swimming in the ocean. Um, and then after that, we headed back towards the um, main islands. I had actually book a um, wine tasting. So on the way there, came across this art shop and we stopped in and they had all these really cool pigments. And as far as I can tell um, from what the guy said, they're all like handmade by his family. Um, everything in the shop is handmade. It was really cool. So I ended up buying some pigments. Um, I actually already made a video about those pigments. If you want to see that video, I'll probably link it up here and there'll be a link in the description. So this is the pigment wall. So that was the guy, he was gathering my pigments at, you know, and putting them in my little gift box. It was really cool. After that, we went to our appointment for the wine tasting, which I then realized that I had read wrong and we were actually late and missed the tasting completely. And so the guy was like, well, since you paid for the tasting, how about instead I just give you one of my bottles of wine? Like you already paid. So I, I should compensate you for something. And we're like, oh, okay. So he gave us a bottle of sparkling wine and uh, we took that. I had found out about this place called the, well, not a place, but it's a show called the Biennale. It is like a worldwide exhibition that happens every two years and tons of countries participate in it. It's kind of like the World Expo, but just for art and so they have like a dedicated building to it and like dead certain sites that you can go to so we went to the main site all right so today is our last day on our trip i found out about this art exhibition um that is hosted in venice for like six months out of that year it happened to be be hosted now while we're here in venice unfortunately it's about to close like in an hour and a half so we don't have a whole lot of time but i thought it would just be fun to see i knew i wouldn't have a whole lot of time to like see every single thing um, but yeah, so here we are at the, the Biennale, and there's one. Here's so one. this is the building that the Biennale is held at, and this is one of the art installations. It's like right at the entrance. Okay, I am in the Spain exhibit, and uh, you know, most of the time I'm like, there's validity in modern art, even if I don't like it, even if I think it's stupid. But this, I think, is really just like, the person who was supposed to do an exhibit here really just didn't care. I mean, really, look at this. There's nothing, there's nothing. It's just white walls, what the heck? Yeah, 
I thought it was interesting that we, throughout the course of this trip, basically got to see like every single period of art from like the beginning to present. Egyptian, Byzantine went through like Impressionist all the way to like contemporary. Um, like it's like we saw it all. It was kind of cool, interesting and cool. And then after that, we went to a gondola ride. I had booked a gondola ride at sunset, and we brought our bottle of sparkling wine, and we got to hang out on the canals of Venice and uh, just drink our sparkling wine. And it was really fun. <laughs> I think you can tell through these spreads that I'm really getting comfortable again with like kind of composition and filling a page and stuff like that compared to like my earlier spreads. I like that I decided to start just giving more pages to a day, not just trying to contain all of a day's events into one page because sometimes so much happens in a day and it doesn't all fit on one page. And so I think that was probably a good call on uh, on my part, if I do say so myself. I'm pretty happy with how these spreads turned out. I think they all turned out pretty good. I forgot to say that the gold was, I forget what it's called now. I think it's Colero. I remember it used to be called Fine Tech. It's a, the metallic watercolors. That's what I use for the, for the watercolors on this part. I would say final impressions. I liked Venice well enough, but it's not a place that I am super keen on going back to visiting. I wouldn't want to stay there for a super extended period of time. To me, it just kind of felt like Disneyland Italy. It feels like a theme park. I don't, I feel like most of the people that live there are not actual Italian residents. I felt like there were very few people that actually are Italians and Venetians that live in Italy uh, proper. And like all the shops felt very touristy. As we were walking through the streets, almost every single person was not Italian. So I don't know, it's like to me, that's not something that I am looking for when I travel. I mean, of course it is a cultural center so like as far as art is concerned i would be interested in going back and seeing more of like the art aspects but as far as like getting an authentic italian experience i i don't think italy is the place for that to be honest so anyways those are just my two cents oh this right here i almost forgot this right here is juan after our gondola tour and he we were finishing up our sparkling wine we were listening to vivaldi and he was pretending to play the violin and uh we were just having a good time and so i just thought that needed to be in here that was our time in venice this was supposed to be our last stop but Plot twist, uh, our flight was canceled early. And we have a flight that was booked to leave from early back home. Um, so this poses a big problem. It's not technically a connecting flight, they were booked separately. And I am just gonna leave it there. If you wanna know how the heck we got back, cause that was a whole thing, um, stay tuned for my next video. I'm sure I will be closing it out with some final comments and you will hear that right now. So there you have it. There's the little surprise of what happened at the end of my Venice trip. I will explain in the next video the whole whirlwind of trying to get home. We got an extra like a bonus day in Paris as a result. So it wasn't all bad wasn't all bad. Look forward to that. If you like Paris, you might like the next video. So I'm going to remind you once again, hit subscribe so you don't miss it. And uh, give me a like if you like this video. In the meantime, 
don't quit your daydream and I will see you in the next one.